Does it seem like the narcissist in your life just skates by and gets away with their manipulative, destructive behavior as if they're immune to justice? In today's reflection, I want to give you clarity about why God's justice might seem slow and how he deals with pride, manipulation, and deceit. Stick with me, and by the end of this discussion, your faith will be strengthened. There is a character in the Bible who always reminds me of God's justice, Jezebel. You may know it from the books of Wern and Seth Kings. Jezebel was a Phoenician princess, daughter of Ethbal, king of Sidon, who married Ahab, the king of Israel. Although she entered Israel's history as queen, her influence was profoundly destructive. Not only did she bring Baal worship to Israel, but she also became a textbook example of manipulation, corruption, and abuse of power. Jezebel was an incredibly strategic woman, using charm and cunning to achieve her goals. She knew how to present herself attractively, seductively, or even as a victim when necessary to gain sympathy or divert attention from her evil actions. Behind this facade, however, there was a controlling, selfish, and ruthless personality, determined to achieve his goals at any cost. This description may sound familiar to many who have dealt with narcissistic individuals. Narcissists, like Jezebel, have an almost theatrical ability to project the image they believe others want to see. They mold themselves to fit the needs of others, but this mask hides a heart full of pride, selfishness, and profound emotional immaturity. Beneath the surface, the narcissistic personality reveals a destructive pattern, an inability to deal with criticism, a constant search for external validation, and behavior driven by a desire for control. Just like Jezebel, who did not hesitate to persecute and destroy those who opposed her plans, the modern narcissist often manipulates, distorts facts, and destroys relationships to satisfy his own desires. Jezebel's story is a powerful warning about how narcissistic behaviors can have a devastating impact, not just on individuals, but on entire communities. She used her position of power to negatively influence Ahab and the entire nation of Israel, leading them to stray from God's path. This reflects how narcissism, when rampant, can corrupt both personal relationships and larger environments, such as families, workplaces, and even churches. Despite her appearance of strength and control, Jezebel exemplifies the underlying fragility of narcissism. When confronted, narcissists react with anger, denial, or attempts to victimize themselves, as their sense of self is deeply dependent on external approval and dominance over others. However, Jezebel's story is also a reminder that no matter how powerful a person may seem, no one is above divine justice. God used prophets like Elijah to confront Jezebel and expose her wickedness. Although she resisted and even persecuted those who represented God's truth, her story culminates in a drastic fall, serving as a timeless example of how God deals with pride, manipulation, and deception. Jezebel shows us that behind every narcissistic mask, there is a void that only God can fill if the person chooses to repent. Otherwise, the inevitable end is destruction. The story of Jezebel is not only a biblical account, but also a reflection of how narcissistic personalities operate today. She challenges us to discern, trust in divine justice, and remain steadfast in our faith, even in the face of difficult or abusive people in our lives. Jezebel was not just a historical character. It symbolizes a type of behavior and mentality that transcends time. Her marriage to Ahab was not only a political alliance, but also a spiritual one, as she brought with her pagan customs and the worship of Baal, a Canaanite god of fertility and rain. Jezebel did not see Israel's faith as something to be respected or coexist with. Instead, she sought to eradicate it, replacing the worship of the god of Israel with the worship of Baal. This shows us another central aspect of narcissistic behavior, the need to control and dominate eliminating any opposition that threatens your position or beliefs. In addition to her determination to promote idolatry, Jezebel personified manipulation in its most calculated form. One of the best-known examples is the plot involving Naboth, a righteous man who owned a vineyard that Ahab wanted. When Naboth refused to sell his property, Jezebel devised a cruel plan. She fabricated false accusations against Naboth, 
arranged his murder, and handed over the vineyard to Ahab. This episode reveals Jezebel's willingness to use any means possible, including lies, cheating, and violence, to achieve her goals. This pattern is easily recognizable in contemporary narcissistic individuals, who often manipulate situations and people to meet their selfish needs. Just as Jezebel used her influence over Ahab to carry out her plans, modern narcissists often manipulate authority figures or people close to them to do their dirty work for them, avoiding being directly held accountable. A fascinating detail about Jezebel is her ability to mask her intentions. Like many narcissistic people, she was extremely skilled at using charm, power, and victimization to divert attention from her evil actions. When confronted, her response was not repentance, but an intensification of her hostility, as we see in her relentless pursuit of Elijah after the confrontation on Mount Carmel. Here, once again, we see the typical behavior of a narcissist. When exposed or contradicted, their reaction is often one of revenge, anger, and an insatiable need to regain control. However, Jezebel's narcissism also reveals her fragility. Despite her apparent power, she was trapped in a cycle of dissatisfaction and instability. This same dynamic is evident in many narcissists. Behind the facade of confidence and authority, there is a deeply insecure person, constantly seeking validation and control, but unable to find lasting satisfaction. This dissatisfaction perpetuates a destructive cycle. The more they try to control, the more they lose. The more they seek to meet their selfish needs, the more lonely and empty they become. The story of Jezebel also highlights God's patience. Before her final fall, God sent several warnings through Elijah and other prophets, calling her to repentance. This is a powerful reminder that God, in His justice, is also merciful. He gives everyone, even the most hardened, the chance to repent. But when repentance is continually rejected, as it was in the case of Jezebel, divine justice manifests itself in an undeniable and relentless way. When Jezebel finally met her end, it was shocking and humiliating. Thrown from a window by her own servants, trampled by horses and devoured by dogs, her fate was the exact fulfillment of Elijah's prophecy. This serves as a grim reminder that however much narcissistic behavior may seem to escape human justice, it will never escape God's justice. Jezebel became a timeless example of how pride, manipulation, and idolatry inevitably lead to destruction. For us today, the story of Jezebel warns us to be vigilant, both in recognizing narcissistic behaviors around us and in examining ourselves to avoid falling into the same patterns of selfishness and manipulation. It also encourages us to trust in God's justice. Even when it appears that manipulative individuals are getting away with it, we can trust that God sees everything and will act in a timely manner. Furthermore, it is a call to hope. As long as there is life, there is the opportunity for repentance, and God, in His grace, is always willing to restore those who turn to Him. Finally, Jezebel reminds us that no human power can surpass the power of God. His story challenges us to depend on God as our defender, to resist evil steadfastly, and to find comfort in the certainty that divine justice will prevail. Just as Jezebel met her end, any narcissistic behavior that challenges God's principles will inevitably meet its downfall. Jezebel is remembered for her infamy as a fervent promoter of the cult of Baal, a pagan god associated with fertility, rain, and agricultural prosperity. This cult was a direct affront to the God of Israel and the principles of fidelity demanded by him. Jezebel not only encouraged this worship, she institutionalized it, building altars and temples to Baal and establishing a network of pagan prophets supported by her influence and resources. His goal was not just to introduce paganism, but to completely eradicate the worship of the true God in Israel, replacing divine devotion with a religion that catered to human pride and moral corruption. Their contempt for God manifested itself in acts of active persecution against the Lord's prophets. Jezebel ordered the execution of many of them, creating an atmosphere of fear and silencing. The prophets were messengers of God, and by eliminating them, 
Jezebel sought not only to extinguish the truth, but also to consolidate her absolute power. This culminated in one of his most notorious acts, the plot to murder Naboth, a pious man, just to acquire his vineyard, desired by Ahab. Jezebel fabricated charges against Naboth, manipulated the judicial system, and orchestrated his execution, all to satisfy her husband's whims. This episode not only demonstrates her coldness and inhumanity, but also how she used her position to exploit the system and get what she wanted, without any consideration for the rights or dignity of others. In modern terms, Jezebel personifies archetypes of toxic people who abuse their influence and power. She can be compared to a controlling mother who manipulates her children with emotional blackmail, imposing fear and guilt to maintain control. She can be the charismatic co-worker who manipulates everyone around her, deceiving some with her charm and intimidating others with her explosive temper. Or it could be that toxic individual in any social environment who keeps people in a state of constant alert, imposing a climate of fear or subservience. Jezebel's behavior transcends genders. Although the biblical story describes a woman, her characteristics can be seen in men and women of all times. Men with Jezebel traits can be equally manipulative, abusive, and ruthless, using their position of power to control and exploit others. They often display superficial charisma, but behind this facade is an incessant desire for dominance and a willingness to destroy anyone who threatens their authority or challenges their narrative. These people share fundamental traits. 1. Manipulation and control. Just as Jezebel controlled Ahab and others around her, these individuals know how to exploit emotional vulnerabilities to achieve their goals. They adjust their tactics depending on who they face, sometimes seducing, sometimes intimidating. 2. Disregard for justice. Jezebel didn't care about the consequences of her actions as long as she got what she wanted. Likewise, toxic people today ignore ethical and legal principles when it serves their interests. 3. Seeking validation and power. Just as Jezebel sought to centralize power in herself and in the worship of Baal, individuals with similar characteristics seek to be the center of attention, controlling, and dominating all interactions. 04. Hostility against the truth. Jezebel persecuted the prophets because they represented God's truth. Similarly, people with this profile resist any form of confrontation, especially when challenged by values, ethics, or justice. In everyday life, dealing with Jezebel-type people can be extremely challenging. They tend to create toxic environments, whether in homes, workplaces, churches, or communities. It is difficult to confront them directly, as their ability to manipulate, blame, or distort facts can make people doubt themselves. Furthermore, they often attract allies who act as facilitators of their actions, whether out of fear, misplaced loyalty, or emotional manipulation. The story of Jezebel serves as a reminder that although these people may seem invincible in their influence, they are not greater than the righteousness of God. Jezebel seemed to be in absolute control as she ruled alongside Ahab, but her story reveals that God sees and judges every act of manipulation, abuse, and oppression. His end was a clear demonstration that human power cannot challenge divine power. This narrative also calls us to be aware of our own behavior. As we look to Jezebel as an example of extreme narcissistic behavior, we are also invited to reflect on whether, in some way, we are exerting control or manipulation in our relationships. After all, the same God who brought justice against Jezebel also offers grace and redemption to those who repent and seek to change. Finally, Jezebel teaches us to not only identify abusive and manipulative behaviors, but also to trust God as our defender. Even when it seems like these people are winning, the story of Jezebel assures us that divine justice never fails. It arrives at the right time, bringing restoration and balance to those who trust in the Lord. One of the fundamental truths about God revealed in Scripture is that He does not tolerate idolatry or falsehood. These practices not only alienate people from His presence, but they also erode truth, justice, 
and harmony in relationships. Jezebel is a perfect example of how these characteristics manifest themselves in someone's life. His devotion to Baal and his attempt to destroy the worship of Israel's God symbolize how idolatry and manipulation intertwine to exalt the self and subjugate others. Jezebel's actions are a direct reflection of how narcissists operate. Just as she created an environment in which Baal was exalted at the expense of the true God, the narcissist builds a reality in which everything and everyone around her must revolve around herself. They erect invisible altars in their own image, using lies and manipulations to ensure that their prominent position remains untouched. God, however, makes it clear in passages like Exodus 23-5 that he abhors any form of idolatry. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them nor serve them. Idolatry is not just about carved images or pagan temples. It's about anything or anyone we put in God's place. In the case of narcissists, the object of adoration is their own ego. Today, their idols may not be statues of stone or wood, but something equally symbolic, mirrors. The obsession with self-image, external validation, and the incessant search for admiration transforms the reflection in the mirror into a personal altar. But it is not enough for them to worship themselves. They demand that others do the same. This explains why narcissists have such extreme reactions to any type of criticism, no matter how small. Their ego is extremely fragile, like glass about to break, and any sign of displeasure or disagreement threatens to destroy the idealized image they have built. As a result, they often react with disproportionate anger, turning small conflicts into major battles. Why do conflicts with narcissists become so intense? 1. Ego Fragility Narcissists depend on constant external validation. Any negative feedback even if constructive, is seen as a direct threat to your identity. Instead of dealing with criticism in a mature way, they often resort to personal attacks, devaluing others, or emotional manipulation to protect their self-image. 2. Worship demands. They are not satisfied with just feeling superior. They need others to recognize this supposed superiority. Any resistance to this dynamic such as disagreeing, setting limits, or not providing the desired attention, is perceived as an act of betrayal. 3. Disproportionate Reaction Because the narcissistic ego is deeply rooted in insecurity, they see imaginary offenses where there is no intention to harm. Small slips, like forgetting to praise them, can trigger emotional outbursts, verbal attacks, or attempts at revenge. However, God is very clear. He not only hates idolatry, but also stands against those who promote falsehoods. Narcissists, like Jezebel, construct false narratives, distort the truth, and exalt themselves at the expense of others. God warns against this, not only because it is a violation of His commandments, but because it harms human relationships and destroys lives. God's response to narcissism and idolatry, God does not tolerate idolatry because it shifts the focus from creation to the Creator. Narcissists want you to focus all your attention on them as if they were gods. They desire control over their thoughts, emotions, and actions, often trying to usurp God's role in their life. However, as seen in the story of Jezebel, God does not allow this to continue indefinitely. He sends warnings and opportunities for repentance, but when ignored, divine justice inevitably prevails. Furthermore, God reminds His people that He is faithful and will not allow any lie or idolatry to remain forever. Just as He confronted Jezebel through the prophets, He also acts today using His eternal truths to expose lies and restore what has been damaged by manipulation and falsehood. Reflections for Dealing with Narcissists 1. Recognize idolatrous behavior. Just as Jezebel promoted Baal, the narcissist promotes himself. Watch for signs of manipulation, lying, and excessive control. 2. Set clear boundaries. Don't give in to their demand for worship. 
Resist falling into manipulative games or attempts at emotional control. 3. Trust in God's justice. It may seem like narcissists get away with their actions, but the story of Jezebel is a reminder that God sees everything and will bring justice at the right time. 4. Avoid retaliating. The fragility of the narcissistic ego often provokes angry reactions, but remember that your fight is not just against the person, but against the spiritual forces that drive this behavior. Ultimately, God does not share his throne with anyone. Just as he did not allow Jezebel to reign forever, he will not allow narcissistic behavior to remain without consequences. True worship belongs to God, and he restores and protects those who put their trust in him. The story of Jezebel shows us a predictable pattern in how God deals with such behavior. First, God sends warnings. Jezebel received warnings through prophets like Elijah, but instead of rethinking, she should destroy them. Despite her opposition, God's justice prevailed in the end. Her story concludes with a gruesome demise, thrown from a window, trampled by horses, and devoured by dogs, as prophesied by Elijah in 2 Kings 9. This serves as a powerful reminder that God will not be mocked. The same principles apply to narcissists today. They often face consequences such as failed relationships, isolation, and perpetual dissatisfaction. While their punishment may not be as dramatic as Jezebel's, their lives are marked by torment, often masked by their outward bravado. Narcissists often burn bridges with others, leaving them alone and dependent on dwindling sources of support. As followers of God, we are called to fully trust in His justice and wisdom. In the midst of situations of pain and injustice, it is natural to feel tempted to seek revenge or take our own measures to correct the harm that has been done to us. However, God's Word instructs us to adopt a different stance, one of trust, patience, and surrender to divine sovereignty. God's promise is clear. His justice will prevail. This does not mean that we will see results immediately or that they will come in the way we expect, but it does mean that God is always working, often behind the scenes, to bring justice and restore that which has been lost. He sees beyond what we can see understanding the motivations and consequences of all actions, and his response is always perfect, even if it seems to take time. Trusting in divine justice offers us a peace that the world cannot provide. When we decide to rest in God, instead of becoming consumed with the need for revenge, we are recognizing that he is the only true judge. Romans 12:19 reminds us, Beloved, never seek revenge, but leave your wrath to God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. God understands the pains we carry. He sees the depth of our wounds and the injustices we endure. However, instead of wasting energy trying to balance the scales on our own, we are called to surrender everything to Him. This surrender is not weakness, but an act of faith, a testimony that we believe God is faithful and just. Seeking revenge may seem like a natural response to suffering, but it often results in negative consequences. When we allow ourselves to act out of anger or resentment, we not only move away from God's purposes, but we also end up fueling the cycle of pain and destruction. Retaliation rarely brings true satisfaction. On the contrary, they often leave us with an even greater emptiness. Therefore, we are exhorted to stand firm and let God be the judge. Our responsibility is not to seek retribution, but to live according to His commandments and trust Him to take care of the rest. Standing firm is not passivity. It is spiritual strength. The scriptures are filled with promises that God not only brings justice, but also restores that which has been lost. In Joel 2, 25, 26, God declares, I will restore to you the years that were consumed by the locust. You will eat until you are full and praise the name of the Lord who has done wonders for you. Never again will my people be put to shame. God doesn't just resolve injustices. He goes beyond bringing healing, joy, and wholeness where there was once pain and loss. The promise that he will turn our mourning into dancing, Psalm 30, 11, 
reminds us that even in the darkest times, there is hope and light on the horizon. 1. Patience in Adversity Trusting God's plan means accepting that His timing is not ours. He may take longer than we would like, but that does not mean He is absent or indifferent. Every moment of waiting is an opportunity for spiritual strengthening and growth in faith. 2. Constant Prayer When we surrender our situation to God, we do it through prayer. We ask not only for justice, but also for wisdom, strength, and peace to face the process. 3. Refuse to be consumed by bitterness. Resentment and hatred can poison our souls. Trusting God means releasing these feelings and allowing Him to work in our hearts as He deals with justice in His time. Trusting in divine justice does not mean being passive in the face of evil. It means acting with discernment, setting healthy boundaries, and seeking ways to live with integrity even in the midst of difficulty. Sometimes this can mean confronting difficult situations with courage and grace, knowing that we are not alone. It also means remembering that God is a restorer. While the ultimate results of God's justice may be in the future, He also works in the present, healing our hearts and giving us strength to move forward. Each day of faithfulness to Him is a step toward complete restoration, whether in this life or in eternity. No matter how much injustice seems to prevail, as followers of God, we can rest assured that His justice never fails. He promises to restore what was lost, turn our sorrow into joy, and use everything, even our struggles, for our good and His glory. Therefore, instead of becoming consumed by anger or the desire for revenge, we are called to trust Him, to remain faithful, and to wait patiently as God works in our lives and circumstances. If you are navigating relationships with difficult people, I encourage you to seek God's guidance and reflect on His Word. Remember, no manipulation or deceit can overpower the justice of our living God.